name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 31st day of October, being Thursday, and week 30 in the night time of the church calendar year two. Our readings will be coming from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. A response to Psalm will come from Psalm 144, verse 1a. A gospel message will come from Luke, gospel chapter 13, verse 31 to 35. The theme of our message today is wearing the armor of God. Wearing the armor of God. Yes, armor is something you wear against attack of the enemies and against all the missiles and all the, uh, the arrows and everything of the enemies. That's the armor you put on. This time, armor of the Lord. When soldiers carry their own thing, you see them brace up, carry their armor, bread, bread, this and that and that and that, see him and, and everything they wear to protect themselves from the weapons of the enemy. But this time, Paul is advising all of us to wear the armor of God. Why should we wear armor of God? We shall wear the armor of God because the enemies are attacking us. If the enemies are not attacking us, there's no need for us to be thinking about protecting ourselves. And that's why today you can see the enemies, I can see in the gospel message, that some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, run away from here, Herod wants to kill you. you should run away from here, Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus said to them, go and tell that fox. Go and tell that fox. Imagine that today and tomorrow I will be walking on the thought that will come to the end of my course. And there's no right for that the prophets will perish outside Jerusalem. It's not possible. Yes. Prophets die in Jerusalem, not outside Jerusalem. So go and tell that force to cast up us. We must be doing our work, casting out demons, curing the sick, and preaching the gospel message. Yes, until we bring our cause to an end, not him. You see such a confidence. And that's why I say he lamented that Jerusalem killing the prophets and the people who sent to them to bring good news to them, they killed them, they stoned them. And lamented that he has been making an effort to gather Israelites. Yes. To gather the children of Israel. As as a hen gathers her brood under her wing. But they could not come under my wing, for sure. And then they say, behold, since you have made everything to gather you and you refuse to be gathered, behold, your house is forsaken. And I tell you, you will not see me until you say, until you say yourself, you confess yourself. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord until you confess that. That's the only time you can behold God again. Telling you, do you see the reason why you should wear the armor? Because the enemies are around you. And that's why Paul was telling them to be strong in faith. Paul was advising the Ephesians, they need to be strong in faith. He said, strong in the Lord, and in the strength of his might. Yes, that what strength is us. Put on the whole armor of God. What the, what's the armor of God that we shall put on? That you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. Yes, put on the armor of God to stand against the wills of the devil. For we are not contending. You are not contending with with. Uh, you are not contending against flesh and blood. No. You are not contending against flesh and blood. But against the principalities, 
against, look at it, against principalities. They, what makes them even come out? All the all things you are seeing in the flesh is manifestation of them. But what you are fighting is against the principalities, against the powers, against the war rulers of this present darkness, the people who are causing this darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's the force you are contending with. There's a spiritual force you are contending with, not physical force. Therefore, that's what Paul was advising on. Therefore, take the whole armor of God with, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Put on the whole armor of God to stand in the evil day. I think Nigerians have been called to this time around to put on the armor to stand against the evil of our period this time, the evil of our generation this time. We are really in, in the evil season, generation. Banditry, kidnapping, killing here and there, criminality here and there, dehumanization here and there, marginalization here and there, sacking families and homes and burning their houses. And you have this criminality all over the place in all the institutions of the country. And the citizens are in trouble. The evil ones are around us. This is an evil day. I haven't done all this to stand. What do you do? Stand there for having fasted the belt of truth. The, what you fast on your waist is the belt of truth, the truth. That will be your alloy that stands for the truth at any moment, at anywhere, and ready to pay any price for the truth. I haven't put on the breastplate of righteousness. What you put at breastplate is righteousness. Make sure you live a blameless life. That will be your breastplate. And haven't showed your feet with the equipment. You showed your feet with the equipment, with the equipment of what? The gospel of peace. Showed your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. That's what you wear you are like equipment for the gospel of peace. Not government of prosperity or criminality. Above all, take the shield of faith. Yes, the shield of faith. Yes, something, if a shield is what you used to shield yourself from arrows and every other thing. With which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation upon your head. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see, this is we are talking, the things you add yourself with. The sword, the word of God. The helmet of salvation. The gospel of peace. Of righteousness and truth. Of faith. And that's why the enemy knows so much, so much about it. That's why he goes to attack all those armors that we're supposed to use. That's why we play down the word of God these days. We have no capacity to hear the word of God again. Even our preachers and even the people who are familiar tell us don't preach long. The megabyte for the word of God is getting lower and lower. If the word, the word which is the sword, when you are sure the sword, you are sword is short, you can't fight good war. When your sword is not sharp, you cannot take serious battle. And why they see them walking down on all those armor that we're supposed to put on. And walking down your faith and make you to believe nothing and depend on nothing. That's why when you see the enemy attacking those things in the church, yes, that's what you see them doing. Denying truth, even people in the authority are just a bundle of lies these days. Righteousness is gone. Is the devil working on us to remove the armor from us? Because you know, with this we can overcome him. And so remove the helmet of salvation and put on whatever you like. Helmet of criminality. And he said again. Pray always. That is prayer must be your, your life. Pray in season and out of season. Any moment of your made praying the spirit. 
and pray for people. Pray for people. And Paul said they should pray for him to that God will give him more trances. To open my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Which, for which I am now in chain. Yes. The armor of God. Paul is not praying that they be saved. He's praying that he'll be able to declare the word boldly as ought to speak. Yes. And when he has this word with him, the sword of God, you know, the sword of the sword of faith, the sword of the word, the sword of the spirit, he can conquer any person. And God should give him that strength of the word. That's the armor you put on as a Christian. When this, any of this armor is working in you, you are vulnerable to the attack of the enemies and be defeated. But when these armors are strong in you, are deep in you, are strengthening you, the might of God will come into being you. And no force, nothing fashioned against you, prosper. All allegations will be put in shame. Victory will be yours. Isaiah 54, 17. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 81. That's why I say, we are the armor of God. Amor of God I have. How, what is the amor of God text? Because the enemy is around. And that's why the psalmist who understood this so well today, this say, look at how he put it. Bless be the Lord my rock. Yes. When you put on the amor, the Lord becomes your rock. And nothing can shake you. Nothing can uproot you because you are rooted in him. May God help us understand today that the amor of God is, a, a, is intrinsic for us as Christians, to be able to contend the evil days, especially the one we find ourselves today in Nigeria. We ask through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I will celebrate the grace of equipping ourselves fully with the armor of God to contend the evil days and principalities and powers that are ready in our generation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. Thank you.